wa ta'ala, creator of the world. May peace and blessings be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those who follow in their footsteps until the last day. Mercy and forgiveness should be asked only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for whom Allah grants his mercy and guides him or her to the right path, none can misguide him or her. And for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not grant his forgiveness and leaves him or her astray, none can guide him or her or advocate the right path for him or her. Dear brothers, inshallah, my intention today is to remind myself and then all of you on our beautiful deen, on the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us by making us of those who witness that there is no other God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his servant. Among that, in that itself, it's a blessing to us. And we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for doing so. Because they are the people in this dunya that they are not electing to do so. My intention today is to remind us on some of the aspects of our deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, in the Quran, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu So we don't have to worry about Islam as, as a religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteeing that Allah through the malaika will protect it. And until the end of the day, the end of the world, Inshallah, Islam, Allah's word, Quran, will be preserved, will not be changed. But the question is how I and you in our lives will use this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Are we going to earn his satisfaction and pleasure or we will spend this time in this world in satisfying our own desires and having disregard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disregard for our benefits in the hereafter. Islam as a religion is the religion that encompasses all aspects of our lives so that mankind could fulfill their life's vision and mission as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala servants who truly worship and obey Him. At the same time, also to serve and to contribute to the well-being and progress of this world. When we make this statement, this is what's so beautiful about Islam. But if we look at ourselves, are we doing this? It's a different thing. So today I would like to remind myself and you what Islam, wa ta uh, Islam is giving us. As such, Islam puts forward to us three religious <coughs> concepts that could not be separated from nor segregated in a person. We have to have all three of them so that we can use the benefit of this Islam. And they are knowledge, belief, and practice, worship, ibadah. Whether we realize it or not, all the problems begin to appear among ourselves exactly when we start differentiating or segregating these concepts of our deen. There are those amongst us who emphasize on the importance of the knowledge only without strengthening their belief, just compiling the facts, without supporting them with your belief. Such knowledge could easily sway a person toward wrongdoing in the wrong path. There are also those who give all the attention and importance to matters related to the belief system without being guided by knowledge or even attempting to search for knowledge that would be beneficial to him or her. These people could then be easily cheated and fall into the trap and tricks of the shaitan. Which we also have example among the Muslim women. And there are also others who give importance to practice alone without having strong, in-depth belief and understanding of the real wisdom, reason and objective of that even act of worship. So there are those who were just in the worship and they perform, alhamdulillah, may Allah reward them for that, but without proper understanding of the worship by itself. <coughs> in the Bastian part I mentioned the saying of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh, who said, La khairin <coughs> there is no value in the ibadah or the worship without knowledge about it, without the purpose of that word, what that worship or what that ibadah should accomplish within you. Then he continues and says, <coughs> There is no value in the knowledge if there is no understanding of that knowledge. And then he finished, La khayra fi Quranin la and there is no value even in the Quran if we do not ponder upon it, if we do not contemplate it, or if we do not have the understanding 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And the proper understanding is just not only to learn it, but also to practice it and implement it. Successful believer is one as exemplified by the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One who bases his belief with the true knowledge. It's not do what everybody else do. We have a saying of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, a true believer is not the one when everybody else does good, he does good. When everybody else does bad, he does bad. True believer is the one when everybody else is doing good, he is doing good too. When everybody else is doing bad, he is not. To be able to it, we have to have the knowledge. We have to have the understanding of that, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking from us. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strongly encouraged his ummah to search for the knowledge. This strongly suggests the importance of knowledge and for the Muslims ummah to be knowledgeable. Just imagine how mistaken we are, in fact how dangerous it would be if we were to practice and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full piety, full taqwa. But we had no, not equipped ourselves with knowledge. So you're doing something but you don't know what you're doing. All those practices and acts of worship would not be accepted should they be against the teachings of Islam. If we are doing it just and we don't even know understanding or we are making mistakes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Kahf says, Bismillah. It says, Say, shall we tell you of those who lose most in respect of their deeds, who lose the value? And it says, those whose effort have been wasted in this life while they thought they were acquiring good by their deeds. While you are thinking you are doing good, but it's no value in it. <coughs> These are some of the consequences of practicing something without the guidance of knowledge taken or properly understood, properly taken from proper resources. <coughs> Searching for knowledge could be done by reading, having discussions on issues and matters which are relevant and beneficial. By doing this, our minds and thoughts will expand and be extended. We will be able to understand and further appreciate the beauty and true teachings of Islam, and subsequently sharing this knowledge with mankind, be them our neighbors, colleagues, or our friends. In Bosnian part, I mentioned also one aspect of that is happening even among us and this is the reason why I wanted to remind us of these three concepts of the just a few days ago we have mandatory children in the school being killed it's justified by certain people by our deen whether we like it or not we are becoming the fourth of the main kind as I said, whether we like it or not, the cheapest life in this world is a Muslim life. The most of the times that the life of Muslims are taken, subhanAllah, they are coming to be taken from Muslims. Is this the understanding that we should have about our deen? Is this the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exemplified to us? And in doing so, we have the issue where Islam is, have to be defended from extremism. Radicalism, however we say. But I mentioned aspect of pendulum. It is says that we are ummatun wasatun. We are ummah of the, if you can say, middle way, path. Ummah of what's acceptable from every aspect. So if you take the this extreme accept of the deen as a pendulum, that's one side. But subhanAllah, we don't talk about the other side too. It's a complete liberalism in Islam, where there is nothing accepted or practiced in your life except that you call yourself a Muslim. That is extreme too. And in from one extreme, we received another extreme. But subhanAllah, ummatun wasatan, neither one is accepted. We cannot present our deen without proper understanding of our deen. We have the more of those on these ends of the pendulums who are explaining what the deen is. But neither one is a proper understanding of the deen. Neither one is a proper presentation of the deen. For that, even I and you will have responsibility in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as I said, we don't have to worry about the deen because Allah will protect us. We have to worry about ourselves. <coughs> so many things that are wrong being done in the name of deen. On both sides of this pendulum. It's not just one side. We have the other side. There are so many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not accepting, they are accepted. So we should equip ourselves with knowledge. Then we will be able to plant the seeds of Iman in our hearts. Iman equipped with knowledge is one that is not easily swayed nor shaken. It will be one that is strong and solid. It will also teach us to be humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see all mankind as our brothers whom we should be cared for and guided to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How we should tackle this issue? We are being also on a side and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of everything. And having, as I said, this raja, hope in Allah's mercy, that Allah will forgive me and you. But what about the other feeling that has to accompany that how is khawf? It's a fear, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My feeling of hope in Allah's mercy should be supported also with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dissatisfaction. So how we should do it? First and foremost, before we embark on our search for knowledge, we should be sure from whom and where we get our knowledge. <coughs> this is our issue nowadays. In this advanced technology, we can get the knowledge from anywhere. So if we are seeking for the knowledge, to please Allah, we should look from where we are searching that knowledge. Imam Malik is very mindful of this manner and he said, knowledge is religion, therefore look from who you get your religion from. So it's not something that should be taken lightly. It's not something that we should just go and read what we like to hear, what makes me be good. We should look from the correct sources. It is important for us to be sure from where we are receiving our knowledge about our deed. The secondly, we need to ensure that the knowledge that is shared will not bring towards false understanding of Islam, which will cause harm and mislead in the religion. For instance, someone who teaches the restricted and narrow definition of jihad, or someone who teaches that his teaching doesn't need for someone to pray, and claiming that only what he teaches is right. Neither one is okay. This is an indication of teaching that is misleading. But you will have the students who likes to be one way or another way. Thirdly, we should not be, as Islamic term is called, ta'assum, in making comparison, comparison and evaluation. Learn from those teachers who are recognized and have shown good educational background and clean track record. Do not seek knowledge from just one teacher. Do not look just for one source. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with so many sources. It is better for us to learn from various sources so that our understanding of Islam is more enriched, that it's more comprehensive, that it's more with understanding, not just by someone said so. He will, he, he will have in-depth understanding and we will be able then to meet the challenges of today's world. And also, this is a beautiful reminder even when we seek the knowledge. This is a remind, reminder for those who, of us who seek the knowledge, who are seeking title of scholar or, or however. We should remember the words of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who are narrated by Imam Tirmizi, where our Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever seeks knowledge to feel more superior than the less knowledgeable, or to argue with the religious scholars, or to attract people to himself, a place made of hellfire has been prepared for him. So even our seeking knowledge should be for the right reasons. It should be to learn about our Lord. It should be to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be to know how to fulfill responsibility. How in this short life in this world, inshallah, we can learn the hereafter which is eternity. And our aboding place to be the Jannah. We need knowledge about that. And we should all seek for it. If we should ever look down at our brother or feel any hatred towards him due to him committing errors or sins, Regardless whether it was to us or to our religion, we should be aware that there are some flaws in our understanding and belief. <coughs> prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as the Prophet of mercy to all mankind. And this is the main message and teaching of Islam. And that is a Muslim cannot look down onto others or to feel proud and arrogant of himself. 
Instead, he should be looking at others with mercy and kindness, with the intention of guiding him or her back to the right path. The Prophet ﷺ said, should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give guidance to someone through the efforts made by you, that would be better for you than the whole world, world and contents of that world. I believe I expanded the time that was given to me, so inshallah I will finish with this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this reminder that I was giving it to myself first and then to all of you. Give us encouragement and motivation to constantly be humble and to continuously be search for the knowledge in our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our faith and subsequently, inshallah, bring the good practices of the Muslims in this world. Amen. Allah in Asana, Kalam Ablagan Nizam, Kalam Allah, Mirkil Aziz al Alam, Kama Kala Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Finas Mil Kalam. Wa is a Kuri al Quran of Festival of Allah, Kum Turhamun. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Din, Din, Intal.